Um, a younger artist was an artist called Kate Herbert, who took a three-day voyage uh, from Antwerp to Bristol. And she was particularly interested in the ways in which the sea trade had been removed out of Bristol city centre through to Avonmouth. And she made this um, really beautiful video installation with eight production monitors in which she showed this series of still lives, moving still lives, from that journey. And the thing she described about that journey is that the sea is absent. It's a huge cargo ship with 5,000 cars, 20 people, for long periods of time. For instance, this was a sort of small vignette in which the cornflake packet just ever so slightly reverberated with the harm of it. And finally, on to Phil Collins, who has just been uh, shortlisted uh, for this, amongst other things. And um, he, he was very different. He came uh, and was in Bristol for the six weeks of the exhibition and put out an open call to unsigned music acts across the city uh, and then created music videos for them. And uh, the remarkable thing about him... Oh, what a shame. That image isn't there. Oh, well, I have to describe it to you. The remarkable thing about it is that he chose bands that were not quite making it. You know, there was a sort of sense in which they were, the, they were slightly out of tune. You know, there was a kind of like, mm, they're just not the up and coming young bands at all. And so each of the videos kind of reflects this. One of them was shot on Western Supermare Beach with uh, the T4 festival. And it's very kind of bleached out. So there's a sort of sense of these young people. Uh, on the sort of cusp of losing their innocence. The second one is of an over-60s ballet troupe. So again, there's a sense of um, trying to be something that they can no longer aspire to. And the third is of a young porn star in uh, a Bristol porn studio. Um, and you can imagine how we had to smuggle receipts for that one. <laughs> um, and that, those pieces were shown, first of all, as part of Ashley Court Music Festival, um, and secondly, um, they was, they've been shown across the world in other new media and video festivals. Ultimately, as a viewer, you are at that point at which you're not sure whether the participants are being exploited. You know, this is the artist who did, you probably all know, but uh, did the eight-hour disco marathon you know, in Ramallah, uh, where, where these young kids are dancing for eight, whoops, for eight hours. Um, and... You know, in his work, you're, you're, you're caught at a point at which you don't know whether you're, what you're watching is exploitation or because it's so exuberant and so, um, you know, kind of wills you into being involved with it and it's, you know, the music's so fantastic. Same with these. Is you're watching, I wish I had it for you, sorry, but uh, you're watching, you know, an over-60s ballet troupe and they're absolutely beautiful. They're fantastic, you know, and they're doing these formations and the music's incredibly sort of sad and... It's, it's a wonderful work, but at the same time, you you're, you're also catch yourself laughing because they're over 60 and they're trying to get their legs up next to their ears, you know. So, it, it, yeah, that, you know... That thing about the audience being uncomfortable, yeah. really important. Yeah, yeah. So, what was this exhibition? You know, what, what occurred, what worked? There were some works that were more resolved than others. Uh, it had a wide-scale audience um, response. We had invigilators in every site who talked about the work, education projects, all the rest of it. But, you know, what was this exhibition? What was thinking of the outside? I'm sure lots of people have opinions on, on what occurred, but because it was all commissioned, I think what struck me was that it was very melancholic. There was a real sort of sense across all of the six commissions that um, there was a kind of aspiration to something that was never quite achieved, whether it be... Um, in Phil Collins' work or within Nathan Coley's work, there was a sense of um, an encroaching kind of uh, resistance to stereotype or it, that emerged through Susan Hiller's work and a sense of isolation and loneliness which emerged through Silker's work and through Kathleen Herbert's work. And because a lot of the work was shown in disused buildings, I think that it, you know, really kind of impinged on it in some ways. So, finally, I just wanted to read to you um, this, this quote from Susan Hiller, which is in the book, um, which just says something about how artists are asked to, invited to work in these ways. And this is a still from one of her videos. 
She says, the aim of art is not simply to communicate something that has already been formulated, but to create something unexpected. One of the reasons why artists make their work is in order to take themselves by surprise, to discover something other than a reflection of their own intention. But for most institutional commissions, artists are hired to do the job of designers, that is, to work for a client and to operate within the client's brief. As time goes on, I find myself more and more resistant to working within these constraints, even though as time goes on, there are more and more opportunities to work to institutional briefs. The flawed romantic idea of self-expression seems, in contrast to the institutional model, to allow for, or indeed to insist on, the artist's own ethical responsibility toward enlarging or redefining what is already known and in place at the start of the project. However skillful and experienced the artist is, he or she is sometimes deliberately interested in exploring at the edge of their control.